If you've ever worked in the color page, uh, things can get a little bit confusing with, you know, how you manage making changes to one clip and how it kind of affects other clips and that kind of thing. I recently got a question asking about this and I thought it'd be good to go over some tips in the color page for kind of how you affect one clip versus others and some workflow tips for that and a little fancy thing called remote and local grades. Let's go. All right, so here I have a few random clips just so we can talk about this in the color page of Resolve 18. Close our gallery so we have a little more room here. Close our effects. And normally, if I want to adjust a clip, I can just select a clip here and make some adjustments. I'm gonna make a really, really pretty one, which is just making things insanely blue. Nice. And if I do that adjustment to one clip, say clip three, it's not going to affect any of the other clips, even if they're from the same piece of media. This is kind of the default way of doing things. If I want to copy this same color grade from this clip onto another clip, I can select the clip that I want to copy the grade to, and then middle button mouse click, that's click down with my scroll wheel on my mouse on the one that I wanna copy from, and that will copy that over instantly. If you don't have a middle button on your mouse, you can right click on that clip and go to apply grade, and that will do the same thing. If you don't have right click, just get a different mouse. I mean, it's 2023. Okay, so that's simple enough. I can even select multiple different clips by holding shift and kind of selecting, or I can hit control to kind of pick and choose. And if they're highlighted in red, that means they're selected in my clips timeline. And I can middle button mouse click there. And if I have a few of them selected, it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? This is a lot, of, this is a lot of stuff. And we'll say replace. And we can copy that color grade over to all these other clips, right? If I want to reset all of the clips, I can shift select all of these right click here in the empty space in my node graph and say reset all grades and nodes and that will reset everything. Okay, so that's kind of the basic clip by clip way of doing things. The other thing that I can do is I can group clips together. So I could take all of these clips one, two and three right click and say add into a new group and we'll call this ice cream. And now we have this little chain link here. And that means that these are linked up together in a group, but you'll notice that if I adjust this, it only affects this one clip. It doesn't affect the other ones. Why is that? The reason is because we don't have our group settings selected. Just go ahead and reset this. Up here in the nodes, in the upper right, where it says clip here, this means that I have the clip nodes selected. And if I twirl this down, if I'm on a clip that is added to a group, we'll have the group pre-clip and group post-clip. So if I were to select group post clip, now we have a yellow outline around our first node here. And if I make an adjustment here to this, we'll see that it affects everything in the group. That's because whatever's happening here in the nodes is being added to the end of the node graph after the clip nodes for every clip in the group. Pretty cool. Similarly, I can reset this. I can go to group pre-clip. And this is the same story, except for it's added before the clips. So if we wanted to do something like add some color management or whatever, I'll just kind of add something here. Then this is going to change the input image before our clip. So what we are working with is an image that looks like this at the very start of our clip nodes. So then we do our clip stuff. So maybe we'll increase the contrast here, that kind of thing. And then we can go to our group post clip and push that contrast even more, you know, and do our color grade. Now, you'll notice that this clip and this clip looks different, even though they're in the same group. The reason for that is because they have different clip grades. Anytime that you middle button mouse click on something, that copies the clip grades over. So if I select this and middle button mouse click, that's going to copy the clip nodes. Same thing here. And so now we have a consistent look between all three of these with the common adjustments being made in the group pre-clip or the group post-clip and the individual adjustments being made in the clip. So why is this useful? Who cares? Well, you probably wouldn't typically group all of the shots like this together. I mean, unless you just have tons and tons of them throughout the whole project or something, you might put a whole scene into its own group. So let's just say this is one scene. I can right click and say, add into new group, and we'll call this scene one. And some weird stuff is gonna happen to these clips because we're overwriting this group pre-clip and group post-clip nodes that we had and replacing them with the group pre and post from the new group, which is nothing. So this clip grade is making this pretty crazy. That's what's doing that. So we'll just go ahead and reset that on both of these. There we go. And so what we might actually do is go to the group post clip and do something like set up our look. 
And so maybe we want to have something like a really high contrast kind of desaturated look that we want to put over this entire scene, but we still want to have the freedom to adjust each shot by itself. So we can do this in the group post clip. We'll just call this look. And then if we switch back over to clip, we can go through all of the clips and we can adjust these by themselves. Like this one needs some more contrast, needs a little bit of adjustment. And we can play with these individually to make sure that they kind of match each other, right? And so now we have this whole scene feeling like it belongs together. And we didn't have to copy and paste this look that's on our group post clip because it's applied to everything in the group. In fact, if we want to change this look, now let's say we want it really saturated, we can just adjust the group post clip nodes on any of these clips that are in the group and it will ripple to everything else, right? So now this one looks a little bit crazy. So we can go back to clip and we'll take the saturation down a little bit just to keep things tasteful. And now we have a consistent look between everything. It's a really nice way to kind of be in control of common things between your clips and grades that you want to keep separate. Now, something that is sort of like this, that's kind of related, is the idea of remote and local grades. Let's just go ahead and get rid of these groups. And let's also reset everything. These clips by default are all working in local grades. What a local grade means is that it acts just how we've been using it. If you adjust a clip, it only applies to that clip. If you adjust the clips group, it will apply to everything inside of the group. But we can switch this to something called a remote grade. And now we see these little pink icons here, which means that these are remote. And any adjustments that we make to this clip, let's say we just want this really green, that is going to apply to anything that uses the same source clip. It's sort of linking it to the original camera footage, which is really great, you know, if you just have a couple of clips and the lighting isn't changing or anything like that, you're going to have the same grade on every single clip. That's a great way to do it. This is also really cool if you have multiple timelines. So let's say we have timeline one and let's go ahead and duplicate this timeline. We'll call this timeline two. I'll open this up, go into color, and I'll move things around just so that we can see it's a little different. So now here in timeline two, we still have this green grade in our clip. And if I decide, oh, I actually want this to look a little different. Maybe I don't like that green look. Let's just make this a little bit pink like this. That's going to work with every clip that uses that original media file here in this timeline, but it will also switch over to the other timeline. And here we see those are updated as well. And so this is great if you have multiple different episodes or if you have, you know, one camera in multiple different timelines, that's a great way to do your color grading in one timeline. And then you don't have to redo your work or copy things over in the other timeline. In fact, if you just have like multiple different versions of the same edit, maybe for social media, you know, you have a timeline for Instagram, you have a timeline for YouTube or whatever, you can do your color grade just once with these remote grades and they'll also show up here in our other timeline. Very, very cool. This is honestly something that I haven't used a whole lot, but man, it makes your life easy if you know what it is and you know how to do it. So again, maybe this shot, I want to maybe tone that a little bit cooler. And of course that applies to our other timeline as well. Pretty sweet. Of course, all of this, you wanna make sure that you do proper color management. I've kind of just been tweaking things around just as an example, but it works the same way if you color manage in nodes or you work color management from the project settings. I hope that's really helpful for anybody working in the color page. If you want to learn more about color, we have a course for that pro color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Make sure to check that out because we go in all kinds of depth on all kinds of things color grading and we color grade a couple of projects together. It's just a good time. You know what I'm saying? And I had a good time today too. And I hope that you had a good time and together we'll have good times.